You don't think perhaps we should have waited for the next one? Well, we caught it, didn't we? What's all the fuss? Now, if I can just open this window, I think we'll be fine. Okay, maybe not. Now, don't panic just yet. I, I'll think of something. The catch was on the inside. I couldn't get to it. That wouldn't open the window. I couldn't quite reach the handle. It's a little stuck. Just give me a second. Just hurry up! Nico! So, we meet again. I've come for my painting. What painting? La Maledicción. Gesundheit. Don't play games with me. We both know the painting conceals a treasure, Mr. Stobart. You know, even if the painting was yours, I wouldn't give it to you. You're just a common gangster. <laughs> a fine sentiment. But I won't let you cross me again. Again? You stole my ruble. My platinum 12 ruble. Well, that was just an old coin. One hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of old coin. Wow. A guy could do a lot of redecorating with that. Ah, uh, enough of your American humor. You will tell me where to find the treasure, and you will tell me now. Not gonna happen. And did you really just say, so we meet again? With his beer belly and piggy eyes, she has looked quite jolly. Oh, hello, miss. Could you help me out, please? Sorry, no can do. But while you're down there, maybe you can clear something up for me. What? Something you said when we first met's been playing on my mind. Do I have a choice? Exactly. Exactly what? Choice. I don't follow. You see, I'm a determinist. Goes with this line of work. But what you said in London made me ask one of the big questions. Is there such a thing as free will? Because if there is, then I've made some pretty dodgy choices in my time. So help me out a bit here. So, do you have regrets? No. I don't think so. But I am a little worried. This whole free will thing has got me thinking. What do you enjoy in life, Shields? Well, uh, I like footy, a good scrap, and topiary. We have a choice. We always have a choice. Just like you've got a choice right now. Help us or not. I don't know. I'd like to. But the boss... My philosophy class seemed to be working. So, uh, you're a determinist. Isn't that just an excuse to let Medovsky boss you around? At least I know who's controlling me actions. Do you? Of course. I do as I choose. So, you chose to leap off that cable car, did you? Yes, because you and Medovsky shot at me. You did choose to shoot at me, didn't you? Well, yes. But I didn't choose to shoot that geezer in the gallery. 
You never intended to kill Henri? I just wanted to rough him up a little. But the gun went off and the rest is history. Free will didn't come into it. But you'd made a choice not to shoot him. The fact he died was an accident. Hmm. So you think I've got a chance of redemption? See? You didn't choose to kill Henri. He died regardless. Exactly. It was accidental homicide. Face it, Shears. Determinism is just a way to hide from responsibility. Maybe you're right. So what? Can't you stop Madovsky? It would be futile to try. His actions are predetermined, like mine. It's lovely chatting, but couldn't we discuss this somewhere more convivial? No way. The boss wants you dead. Why not choose what you want to do? Oh, I need to be sure. Is there nothing you can do to help us, Shears? It's more than my job's worth. So, you're a football fan, right? Gotta love the beautiful game. So, if determinism was valid, why would anyone play? What would be the point of it all? Hmm. Sometimes when we lose, that's just what I think. If what you create in Topiary is predetermined, what's the point? Topiary isn't about freedom of expression. It's haughty cultural valium. It makes the voices stop. If by redemption you mean a spell in jail with damn off a good behavior, then yes. I think there is a chance for you. And you know what? No. Enlighten me. I'm getting too old for this crime, Lark. I think I'm having an epiphany. Of course, it might just be indigestion. <clears throat> no, it's definitely an epiphany. I think you're right. The only thing that has led me here is me and my actions. I'm going to talk to the boss. He's sure to listen to reason. Boss! What is it, you imbecile? How many times have I told you not to interrupt me when I'm about to kill somebody? Remember what we agreed. I am the big man who takes care of the big things. And I am the little man who takes care of the little things. <laughs> exactly. So, haven't you got a little thing you should be doing? Hmm. There is one little thing, now you mention it. Well, don't let me stop you. Get on with it, you big baboon. If you say so, boss. Oh. Oh, dear. There you go. Free will, under orders. Now that is what I call a real paradox. George, you took your time back there. Yeah, Madovsky and I had a lot to catch up on. And you and Shears seem to be getting on just fine. So, I figured you'd holler when you were done. Always nice to see old friends. Oh, thank God it's you two. You would not believe what just happened. Try us. Oh dear, the monks aren't going to like that. We had a little philosophical disagreement on the way up. Nothing the little TLC won't fix. <clears throat> yeah, they're, they're not really broken, more in uh, a transitional state. It's amazing what a lick of paint can do. What now, Georges? We find Langham, we stop his crazy plan, we rescue Eva, and you win a Pulitzer. <laughs> when you put it like that, Georges, sounds easy. So, how are we going to catch Langham now? Well, we've got a pretty good idea where he's going. True, Mesopotamia. Or Iraq, as it is now. Not exactly a prime tourist spot. Need a lift, 
I don't think we'll catch Langham in a limo, but thanks. I'm not talking limo, mate. I'm talking Madofsky's full-on, fully fueled tax and ticket Learjet 60. You think you can get us to Iraq? Wouldn't be the first time, if you know what I mean. I've got the keys, the contacts, and a full drinks cabinet. How about it? It's the least I can do.